let us take a moment to think about our bodies. Let us take a moment to think about what we do with our bodies, how we sleep, how we eat, how we take care of ourselves. And the first thing that does come to mind is sleep. Uh, many of us are having a very difficult time uh, maintaining enough sleep in this day-to-day -day grind that we all find ourselves in, uh, or at least a majority of us. One of the things I feel is very important is to listen to your body when it comes to sleep. If you are tired and your body is telling you you're tired, you must listen to it. I know that we feel that uh, in today's society that we have to do, we have to do, we have to go, we have to go. But that's not being true to your higher self. That's not being true to what is best for you. If your body is asking you and telling you to relax, then lay down for five minutes. Take a five minute cat nap. Um, when it comes to going to bed uh, and waking up at a reasonable hour, getting enough sleep for your body. Now, mind you, during this process of what we call the shift, many people's sleep patterns are gonna be disturbed and you are coming into a new way of existing, you're coming into a new way of being. Some people may need more sleep. Some people may need a little extra sleep. And I know the most common excuse for people not getting enough sleep is that they have to wake up early to go to work or go to something on their agenda or their schedule. If that is the case, what I would suggest is learning to go to bed earlier. I know, my goodness, how dare I you might miss something if you go to bed early, but you must be true to yourself. If you are tired when you are waking up at 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, that is your body telling you you need to go to bed earlier. And if that means going to bed at 9 or 10 o'clock at night, then by all means, go for it. That's what you need to do to optimize your, not only your brain function, but your health. Um, I know for me, when I don't get enough sleep, I, I can't function. Um, I know that a lot of the times uh, I myself have very disturbed sleep where I wake up in the middle of the night and then I have to compensate for that. So in other words, listen to your body. Please be honest with what your body is telling you. It's your best friend right now. This is your vehicle for your consciousness to exist on this planet. And having enough sleep is very, very important. Um, things to avoid are liquor before you go to bed, uh, sleeping pills, my goodness, how many times have we heard of people taking sleeping pills and having a hangover the next day? If you are having problems sleeping, find a natural solution, uh, learn to drink tea, learn to meditate, learn to exercise b uh, hours, a couple hours before but by all means we have to be very careful with this whole idea of sleep aids especially when it comes to pharmaceuticals that can lead to an addiction which is not going to help you in any way shape or form when it comes to elevating your consciousness or raising your vibration i know many 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 people that are addicted to xanax that are addicted to uh, liquor before bed that are taking uh, just over-the-counter sleep aids and this doesn't let your body form a natural rhythm. It disturbs the natural rhythm. Now, I understand that occasional use might be necessary, but please do your best to refrain from that. Learn to listen to your body and try to figure out what is best for you. On the other side of this, remember, we are shifting, we are changing, your body is changing. So you may not need eight hours sleep. You may only need five hours sleep but you might be programmed to believe you need eight hours sleep. So if you can function on five hours sleep and you're fine with it, don't be uh, disturbed by the idea that, you know, oh my gosh, I'm waking up at 5.30 in the morning after going to bed at, at midnight and I'm feeling alive and aware and awake. So that, fine, go with that. It might be the rhythm that you're in right now and you need to be true, again, listening to your body. What is it telling you? The other, um, one of the other things that we need to speak of as far as um, our body is concerned is fluoride intake. Uh, we have fluoride in our water. We have fluoride in our toothpaste. 
Uh, for those of you that are non-believers that fluoride is a poison, please, by all means, research the ingredients, research the side effects, and research how it's been used in the past to harm, um, to harm humans and how it, it really is a, a rodent poison. So while we've been duped to believe that fluoride is good for us, it is in everything. It is in a lot of our water supply. It is in much of the food you eat. And this is something that people are not aware of. You can stop drinking fluoridated water. You can stop using fluoride toothpaste. But when you go out to eat dinner at that fancy restaurant, what water are they using to cook with? When you buy food that is prepared, that has water listed in the ingredient, and many, many foods have water listed in the ingredient, what water are they using? Is it fluoridated? How fluoridated is it? Is it from a region of your country or of the world that is heavily fluoridated or not so much fluoridated? So right now, the unfortunately, our food supply, unless you are growing all of your own food, cooking all of your own food, and have a clean, natural well from which you can uh, bring your water from, and create all your breads and your foods and grow your vegetables and whatnot without fluoride, most likely you are ingesting it. And for those of us on the consciousness path, we are very aware of what happens to our pineal gland, which is a very intricate part of our physical body and a very intricate part of our spiritual development and our ability to use our intuition, our ability to raise our vibration. What I will suggest today is, by all means, get non-fluoridated water. If that means using distilled water, so be it for your drinking water, for cooking, um, you know, for making soups, for making your iced tea, whatever it is that it is, use distilled water. Um, unless it specifically says no fluoride or... or or um, you're using a reverse osmosis process, which can be very expensive to install in your home, uh, most likely you are gonna get a little bit of fluoride. Uh, Non-fluoridated toothpaste, of course, that's a, a, the first place that we could start. Uh, so please consider reducing the intake of fluoride. It is not doing you any good. It is not helping you with your consciousness. It is creating calcification in your pineal gland, and it's something that you need to look into and realize that there are many more sources besides water and toothpaste that contain your fluoride. It includes your food as well. Please be very aware of that and do your best to reduce the intake. Again, Labels. We just spoke about uh, fluoridation in water. We said that water is in most foods. I bet you didn't know that one of the first ingredients in most of the foods that you buy is water. So if I can, again, I know this sounds very, very cliche, but please consider reading the labels of the food you eat. If you're not eating organic, if you are eating uh, processed foods, if you're eating out a lot, ask them what is in the food. Uh, we have come to a place in our society, and this was a very rude awakening for me um, uh, just yesterday, quite honestly. I wanted to prepare a nice dinner this evening, and buying the food and all the ingredients was more expensive than me going out and eating it. And we're talking going to a, you know, a, a fairly nice restaurant, you know, $10, $20 per serving, my goodness, have you noticed that the food that you eat is now more expensive to eat at home sometimes? So with that in mind, we need to look at the ingredients of what we're buying. Look at what you're eating. What have the restaurants you're going to, have the fast food places posted the ingredients? Can you pronounce the ingredients? And a friend of mine many months ago said to me, if you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Uh, it's a very good sign of it. It's something that is not good for you. We have preservatives that are coming uh, from places unknown. We have ingredients just, uh, such as uh, natural flavoring, which are actually animal byproducts. We have um, uh, chemicals and, 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 and um, foaming agents 
that are very cancerous that we don't even know what they are and they're being listed as natural ingredients. So you have to be aware of these labels. You must be aware of the common ones like um, high fructose corn syrup, cornstarch, soy protein, which is all GMO, and that's a whole nother show. But remember that these ingredients most likely, if they're coming from a corporate source, are genetically modified or coming from a genetically modified crop. When you're buying um, your produce, when you're buying your, your, your uh, meats, if you're a meat eater, um, is it being fed genetically modified grain? Uh, is the actual ingredient, is the actual produce genetically modified? And again, I don't want to go into the whole GMO thing, but I would like to remind you all the importance of reading the ingredients. And I know people say it over and over again. And I have a very wonderful suggestion for this. Many of us, especially in, in our communities, uh, and there's many uh, communities like us um, around everywhere, and I'm not talking just on the internet, but in your home. Uh, I'm assuming that you hang around with like-minded people uh, you go to, um, you know, metaphysical, spiritual, uh, uh, geopolitically aware type events that maybe you might want to consider, and check this out, putting a, together a label field trip. And what I mean by that is ask several of your friends to make it a weekly, a weekly thing, a weekly meeting. Call it um, uh, ingredient awareness or nutrition awareness and get your friends together and every week go down an aisle of your local grocery store and read the labels together. Make it a group effort. And by making it a group effort, you are going to bring attention not only to the store management, but to the patrons of that particular grocery store that you're reading the labels and you're all doing it as a group. Share, share the ingredients out loud. Pick up a product. Read the ingredients out loud to each other. Take turns and let everyone know that you are aware. And hopefully by doing so, you will show the cons other consumers around you. And not only that, you will be educating yourself and your friends that it does matter what you're putting in your body and you wanna know what it is. So back to the beginning, read the labels and do what you can to reduce any kind of negative uh, or harmful substances being put into your body by what you eat and what you drink, like sodas, et cetera, et cetera. One of the things that we hear, again, that's very cliche, is um, exercise. How many times do you hear people say, you must exercise, you must run, you must go to the gym, you must, you know, must, you must, you must. And that is very true. As we get older, we become more sedentary. Um, as our society has progressed, we have become more sedentary. Uh, our cars take us everywhere. We have elevators, we have escalators. We sit at desks all day long. So what we need to do is really take into consideration that our body needs to move. How often did you move today? Uh, did you take the stairs? Have you gone to the gym? Um, I was one in my youth uh, and now, of course, in my middle age, I regret it. But in my youth, I took for granted the idea of exercise. And now I've found myself to be forced to feel better. I must participate in some form of exercise. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a very, um, a very inexpensive uh, gym nearby. It's a no frills. But even if I just go on the treadmill for an hour every other day, or do two or three machines, I do feel better. Uh, moving around really does release very positive, I believe it's serotonin in the brain. So not only does it make you feel better, it makes your heart healthier, it gets your blood moving, it helps your liver and your kidneys to filter out any toxins. So remember that even though we feel we're spiritual beings and we can get over anything, we are still in a physical body that needs to have uh, attention and tender loving care. And that does include uh, some form of exercise. Take the stairs, learn to walk, enjoy a walk in nature if that's what you need to do. Uh, join a cheap little gym, get on the treadmill for an hour every other day. Um, 
learn to uh, learn to move around your house. I know that for me, I work I work at a desk all day long, and I find myself dragging and and I tell myself, gosh, why am I so tired? And that's my reminder that I need to get up and move around. And yes, two or three times a day, I will get up. I'll start pacing around my my uh, apartment. I'll start moving around. Uh, going outside, walking up and down the stairs, just to get the the circulation moving. Uh, when we're sedentary, our circulation doesn't do so well, and that can lead to uh, high cholesterol. That can lead to heart disease, and especially if um, if you're an average person like me, who might drink, who might smoke, who might you know not eat so well, you need to keep that circulation going. So do yourself a favor. Figure out something you like to do to move around. Uh, it's funny, I just had a dream last night that I was roller skating and I can't help but wonder if maybe I should buy a pair of roller skates and take that up again. <laughs> that was something that I loved. So what do you love to do? What do you love to do to move around? Do you love to dance? Go dancing a couple times a week. Join a dance uh, class. Uh, join a gym. Walk around the block. And especially listen to your body. Again, that's my main focus of this particular discussion. Listen to your body. Are you depressed? Are you sluggish? It's time to move around and that's very very important especially in today's day and age. Now we talked about putting what, what we put into our body. We've talked about uh, exercise. We've talked about fluoride. Uh, we've talked about awareness of what we're eating. But have how many of you have brought your awareness uh, into what is seeping in through your skin. And what I mean by that is your shower water. Do we forget that the water in the shower is fluoridated and heated, most likely? Have we forgotten that there are ingredients in cosmetics and body washes and shampoos in lotions in creams in shaving lotions? What are you putting on your skin? A very good example of this is sunscreen. One of the prime ingredients of sunscreen has been proven to be very cancerous and has created a lot of problems for a lot of people and I highly recommend you look into these over-the-counter sunscreens. It seeps into your body. Your body wash is seeping into your body. You're in a hot steamy shower, you're rubbing something all over your skin, your pores are wide open, your body is going to absorb it. So be aware of the ingredients that are being used. Be aware of what ingredients mean. Uh, there are many, many natural ingredient um, body products out there. Some expensive, some not so expensive. I mean, some inexpensive. Or learn to make them yourself. Um, I have found that, um, I, I'm not going to name the brand, but there is one particular brand out there that I used to be associated with, if many of you know who I am and what I've done in the past, that I know has worked with a very organic ingredients. Um, I believe maybe one or two of their products have petroleum and that's like um, a hair product. But uh, again, why rub petroleum on your body? People love Vaseline. Why run Vaseline? Do you know what Vaseline is? Petroleum jelly. It's a, it's a, a, for lack of a better term, it's the waste from the production of gasoline. So why are we rubbing petroleum products on our face? Why are we rubbing it on our skin and other areas of our body that will absorb it much quicker? <clears throat> So again, I just want to create awareness. I want to create awareness. Um, there is a, a particular documentary out there uh, that was out um, maybe a year or two ago. I wish I could remember the name of it, uh, but look it up. I know it's on Netflix. Um, I don't know how you would search for it. If I find it, I will go ahead and post it. But it was um, a documentary of following a family for a year where they were removing all the artificial chemicals out of their house. Uh, and they're and they're talking about even the cleaning ingredients, their dishwashing liquid, all of these things that they were going to be breathing or having their skin come in contact with. You'd be amazed how many chemicals you have in your home right now. Even if you're a vegan, even if you use natural products, 
you would be amazed how many chemicals you breathe every day, how many you're coming in contact with, how many you're touching, everything from your polyurethane furniture or, or whatnot to the, uh, the cleaning ingredients that you have stored under your kitchen sink. But uh, it is, it's very, very difficult. And that takes me to this next uh, and last part of this particular discussion uh, before we go on break here, we're coming up at the half hour. But just be aware, use common sense. Uh, you can't, maybe you can, if you can, that's great. But for most of us uh, who are involved in this modern society, it's very difficult to remove all the toxins, all the unhealthy foods, uh, you know, have clean air, have clean water, have uh, non-chemical carpets or, you know, natural fiber wall hangings and whatnot. So just use common sense. And, and one of the terms I like to use is harm reduction. Do less harm to yourself. Don't eat that, that uh, lean cuisine, you know, whatever it might be with 8,000 uh, preservatives in it. Uh, don't drink water out of your sink unless it's filtered. Uh, you know, there's just all these little steps that you can take. And, and really, if you think about it and you have the awareness, you will be able to use your own common sense and critical thinking to see what you can do to reduce harm. Uh, I find that, uh, you know, some of us prefer uh, or some of us enjoy, let's say, oh, I don't know, a cheeseburger every once in a while on that plain old high fructose uh, burger bun. And that's fine if you're doing it once a month or once every six months. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that you need to live like an ascetic monk or anything but please be aware of uh, everything that's around you, everything that you're breathing. What are you putting into your body? And just do, just use common sense. If it smells like a chemical, it's a chemical. It's probably not good for you, so don't use it. If you have a, a house where you can get away with using vinegar instead of bleach to mop your floors, go ahead and do that. Uh, if you can get away with um, using a, a lye soap that you that you create yourself at home, create it. Uh, I have friends that make their own detergent, and it's very easy and very inexpensive for your laundry detergent. Um, I mean, all of these things are things that we can take into consideration. Um, again, let me just run over uh, what we just covered. Uh, remember, love your body, listen to your body, sleep when you're tired, take a nap if you're tired, Take a five minute break in your break room at work if you need to and just quiet your mind. And if I may ever so quickly jump in here before we wrap this up, is remember thinking also tires the body. Uh, I know people that don't do manual labor as a job, but they're busy thinking and doing problem solving. They have high stress work environment. It makes you tired. So yes, that does count. You don't need to be a construction worker to get tired at the end of the day. So listen to your body. Take a break when you need to. Relax, go to sleep, and do yourself a favor. Go to bed earlier if you're not getting enough sleep. Remember to reduce fluoride intake. Be aware of where these sources of fluoride are coming from and do your best to reduce that as well. Remember to read the labels. If you can't pronounce it, it's probably not a good idea to put it into your body. Uh, one of the common things many, talk, many people speak of is to shop around the perimeter of the market. You, that's normally where you're going to find that, the healthier, fresher stuff. Uh, again, GMO is a whole other topic, and educate yourself on that the best you can as well. Exercise. Move your body. Do something you love. Dance, roller skate, walk through the park but move your body whenever you can. Think about what you're putting into your body, on your body, what are you breathing? What are you rubbing on you and that lotion you use every night? Is it using a, a petroleum byproduct, petroleum waste? Uh, that's a good way to label it. Vaseline is petroleum waste. So think about what you're rubbing on your body. Think about the sunscreens you're using. And last but not least, use common sense and do your best 
to reduce the harm of our environment and what we're applying on our body, what we're putting into our body. And again, do it at your own discretion. If you love that beer at the end of the night, go for it. But know that that beer might have uh, fluoridated water. It might have been brewed with fluoridated water. So we have to remember harm reduction, be balanced. Don't get crazy. It's okay. We're living in a very difficult time. We're living in a very unnatural time. And as we work toward creating a better world and as we work toward raising our awareness and raising our consciousness, we can take small steps to live a healthier life.